Hang on. Okay. All right, we'll call the order of the uh, Economic Development Authority meeting, regular meeting, Tuesday, October 15th, 2024, 12 p.m., Montrose City Hall. Uh, roll call. Kirby Moyer. Gabby Stubbs. Nancy Meinier. Jessica Bonnell. Jackie Hurley. David Paradise. Uh, approval of the agenda. I'll make a motion to approve the agenda as this evening. All in favor, say aye. 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 Motion passes four to zero. Uh, approval of the minutes. I'll make a motion to approve the May 22nd, 2024 agenda. I will second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Motion passes four to zero. Uh, on the treasurer's report. Um, Economic Development Authority Fund currently has two hundred fifty five thousand seven hundred sixty dollars eighty six cents, and the resulting loan has paid the same of two hundred fifty seven thousand seven hundred fifty four dollars seventy eight cents. Any questions? Huh? Any questions? Huh? Okay. Uh, so old business, getting onto the new business. Um, we'll update and uh, review of the first building finance conference. I know Gabby was able to go. I unfortunately had a uh, be an LA for that day, so uh, thank you for, for attending that. Kind of want to fill us in on how that went and any updates from them? Uh, yeah, it went really well. I have a lot of things here that you guys can review. Um, we had a session where they were talking about a few of the here or a pod model. And they said pod model where they took a um, child here Unit. I guess that's the uh, um, two, three, three of the cities went into this and like made a space for providers to come and and go in and um, um, go in and provide care for children. So helping um, with their need. One was an independent at the hospital. Uh, then they had a session on centers, and there was two cities that. Uh, I think one was a county actually, and one was a city that went in um, and then provided a space for a center. And all of, I mean, most of them only charge a dollar a month for use, um, for the use. Um, and just talking about how they could support the need for child care in the community and by doing both of those things. Um, and then we got updates from the college on kind of how they're trying to put people in to the field, the, there was a high school, so they got funding from the college to do the TVA um, certificate in development. Um, but if you have that, you can get it into their classroom, and they brought that into the high school, so then they could get that um, schooling before they left and then get out in childcare, so they can get it into the time faster and free. Um, I did talk to Stephanie afterwards, and um, she was wondering if we did a quote, or not quote, but like uh, assessment or analysis of, of our gap is, what our need is in the community. She said we could do that with a small, like with just a small group of people. So I don't think that we've yeah. ever done it for Montrose, but I know that uh, the Waverly did it five years ago, six maybe, um, and it came back. And it, they basically said we were in Montrose, and they, they were looking at center a few years ago, I think, too, um, but they couldn't. Yeah, actually, uh, just a brief update on that. So I do have in contact with somebody who is looking at doing a Chris Haven Franchise Center um, in the area. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to be Waverly or kind of in the middle of what. Um, another interesting thing I will say that we heard at that was that um, in-home daycare centers are easier to get into currently and easier to create. So Stevens County, what they did is they actually put some space and they built five, six, six to start with, um, just one bedroom, one bathroom, little homes in an area, and then they could start up a child care center there. Um, so it was easier for them to get the licenses they need and more affordable. They actually have space now that they're going to start another four, so they got a big parcel of land 
working with each other on little playgrounds because we can't have the intermixing um, and everything like that. So that is one thing that was interesting um, that I was baking out of that also. Um, and I can actually get you the numbers if you're interested in going all around all of Wright County. Currently, we're at a need for 17,000 spots in all of Wright County for township. So I do have those numbers if you want. I can send that to you as well. And then something you said too, when we start doing analysis, we can do a smaller project because we're talking about the big. Um, in the past, talking about doing like a full group of people and going through that year process um, with them because there is a smaller option um, or a shorter option and then a smaller group available for that. Um, but it is still a commitment so it's still be small people um, to volunteer to kind of head that up. Um, that one she said close to like five or six.
is that I work really good in the first third part of my quad model, and we're going to do it independently. But, you know, being able to have other people support, like privately, I would need an income to kind of house it, and it wouldn't be affordable for the society. So having the city come in and help and offer you. And family child care, um, having all the children in multiple ages is just one of the best um, benefits for them to work off each other, learn empathy from each other. Other than that, is there any other things that have been done in the county level to help address this 17,000 child need for child care? At the moment, there's not a whole lot. Um, we did fill out the first child care grant, which did not go through at the beginning of the year. Um, I am working with a group of people versus just myself talking to the EDA as well. Um, they've all written that I've had some discussions about how can we work together to help put some child care options. Can um, I ring the bell? Oh, okay. And we'll have more discussions with that moving forward. Going to this grant is the first thing that we can do. I do know that um, the Kids Haven in Buffalo, she has put her operation at the franchise. So she is actually opening a franchise in Montreal and hoping to be the franchise in Waverly. So if there's people that don't know or have that model of a child care center, but they want to open one, um, there's two different things we're doing with people. Um, this is the model we use up to the housing that she in. Um, Old National Bank is the one that's been doing very good with these two um, franchises in regards to funding and things like that. So. Um, Trying to move forward and get some more collaboration. As some of you know, I'm a one man show right now in the office, so I'm just trying to do as much as I possibly can and hopefully they'll be hiring soon. So that'll help put me out in more availability too. If we had funding from like first child plan, first children plan, just funding back to your computer program. Um, you know, depending on this grant, 
moving on to the update and review, we write down the Indian Greater MSP Partnership Workshop. Mm -hmm. Um, me and I went to last week. It was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I thought it was really good information. I, um, especially about being like project ready and just sort of getting some of that information ready to go, which is one of the projects that come through match. Um, one of the problems with us is that we don't have a ton of land space. Mm -hmm. So a lot of that stuff they're talking about like just wouldn't have applied to us. Um, obviously, you know, like the hundreds of acres that they're looking for. Yep. Um, and I would worry because we also don't have wastewater capacity right now. So um, two issues that are huge and are going to start standing our way for some of this development, especially attracting a bigger industrial type project. Um, This was with um, greater MSP, so it's kind of like economic development throughout um, the metro area and a little bit extended beyond that. Um, they work, she works on a lot of stuff. Um, one of the things so the project ready section. Um, talks about like having just some information just readily available about like utilities and accessibility and like what size developments we have available, um, all that kind of stuff, just kind of like almost in like a brochure or something, mm -hmm. like kind of ready to go, mm -hmm. so that um, once in a while we'll get emails from DEP or or wherever they come from, <laughs> usually from you guys, um, but it's like sites that are looking for, um, like this one, 100 to 200 build a day years. Like that's a lot, we don't have that. <laughs> um, we certainly don't have that in the city. Um, they also talked about like preemptive annexation, um, which could be something we look at, but um, I don't know, it would, it would be the property owner would have to be agreeable to that. So, there's one that says, is your community RFI ready? And it goes through a bunch of different sections. Um, so like sites and buildings. If it should, if you have like an inventory of any open buildings and any sites that would be available. Um, know about the zoning of those sites and and if the zoning needs to change, kind of having the process for that sort of at least so you know it so you can explain it to them if it does need to get changed. Um, Transportation access roads, um, all the utility information, as well as what kind of power we have, and um, obviously our water and wastewater information, which is not great at this time. Um, environmental reviews, and then we have like our AER, um, but there's other environmental reviews that might need to be done. Um, having a, a, a list of employers and all the workforce stuff, um, any taxes or sample taxes that we can give to these companies that are looking for spaces, um, aerial photographs, flood plain maps, we just updated that, zoning maps, we have those. Um, so just kind of like being ready in case we get a call kind of thing. <laughs> Not have anything to add, you were we had a this meeting, so <laughs> <laughs> um, the one thing that um, really stuck out to me too is not to any time not to cut yourself short. Um, so you might not have 100 or 200 acres, but you might have 30 acres. And the one thing um, that kind of came out of the meeting too that was a little bit afterwards is um, the EDA and the EDA hearing and discuss doing a rail study, um, figuring out where along the rails are they willing to potentially put stops or things that need to happen. Um, we know especially Delano is working on trying to get ready for a spot so that way they have that availability for you know rail right away um you know making sure that like you stated there's your utilities and everything else your wastewater i know is a concern at this moment but knowing that that's something that's in the works mm -hmm. um having that information up and ready so no this year we're this far but next year we'll be this much farther or however um 
with the, some of these projects, they want to start shovel ready right now, and some of them are like, nope, we have a year, we're just looking. If we know it's going to be ready in a year, then it might be something else. Um, you know, so know where your workforce, workforce is pulling from. Where do you have people coming from? Watertown, you know, everything like that. <coughs> um, wow. So that is something that, um, you know, having that inventory is also another thing. So we have access from EDP to, to Lasso. So Lasso is a database that we can put all of this information from. I can send over to RFPs and say, hey, <clears throat> this is what they're looking for. I know you potentially have this site, this site, and this site. Has anybody outside asking any questions? Do you want me to submit that site? If I submit that site, then it would turn around. I would submit it. There'd be a questionnaire. So I'd give the, the access to the questionnaire. Give me a little answer that I submit. And then it's already done. So it makes the RFP and RFI so much, much quicker. So that's one thing I do have been working with all the communities with too also. How can we get these sites into Lasso so that we all already have it? And you might not have all of those answers in there yet, but at least then we'll know. Well, my really does have this one, this one, this one. Maybe we just have to look at the utilities or something like that. So um, we plan on doing this every year um, moving forward. There was a lot of cities that wasn't available, and we know that you know people changed every day. So um, a lot of those are in the training. Yeah, and like some of the stuff like the workforce management, we about like how much population we have just because we have more or less. Mm -hmm. Or you know, you know, we might only have four thousand people here, but within about a thirty-minute or so drive, we have two hundred thousand. So yeah, that thirty-minute drive time is what they said basically is your sweet spot. Mm -hmm. Anybody has to drive 40 minutes, you're pretty much done for. But if you look at everybody that's within the 30 miles of your city, so um, that is very, very important to look at. Also, we might actually do a Zoom conversation of those who are available because we didn't get to have a lot of discussion time. Um, so I will send out information on when that comes up to you. If you guys have any questions that you might want to ask, let us know. Um, and we can easily bring up the Greater MSP. Um, they've been an asset that we've had and we've been in correlation with, but it hasn't been utilized nearly as much in the past from the partnership. And that is changing very quickly. So want to make sure that we utilize them any, any way we can. So. What do we think of the next big step for us to get ready for this? Yeah, I mean, until we get those pipes connected, we just we, we really wouldn't be able, especially like a big commercial user or industrial or anything. I don't think we would be able to take care of that stuff. Yeah. So, but yeah, I think getting ready and being ready by that time, so we can like recruit and like you know maybe yeah, reply to some of those RFIs and, and especially for like a year out. Year. You know, from that again. Yeah, that's coming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so maybe 2025 or 2020, early 2026, maybe. Yeah. We could start um, getting some of that information together so we're ready to go Absolutely. in 2027 when we're probably ready. So I would work on gathering, you know, like this. Yeah, this all that stuff. Yeah, and and then, utilities and as we talked to the Excel and the yeah. plan and that kind of stuff. And yeah, it was, it was a great meeting. Yeah. And, and it pulled people, and it wasn't just city people, it was like utility people, there are people there from Martin Hatch and Michelle and real estate people and um, yeah, I mean it just was all sorts of I did it people, yeah. It was Three of your county commissioners were there. Yeah, I'm very surprised. And two county staff, so yeah. yeah. What is that? It was it was not I, I was sitting there and I was just like, wow. Yeah. We had a, a lot yeah. of information, and it's something that we should probably meet on several different times. Yes, yeah. it was like <laughs> like information overload, almost. At some point. You know, I mean, yeah. not in a bad way, but yeah. just like wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Yes, any questions about that? I'm glad we. I'm glad I went. And yeah, that we got the information.